Good morning, everyone. I welcome you to this fourth Sunday after Epiphany service for Mitchell's Presbyterian Church. We are online today, and uh, due to the ice uh, that is in the parking lot and on the walkways of the church, we just wanted to err on the side of caution for everybody's safety today. So welcome on this digital uh, version of the sanctuary that is behind me. I uh, will be trying to uh, share multiple aspects of worship with you all via the screen share feature that I'm recording on uh, so that you are able to follow along with various parts of worship. Uh, Technology is always fun, so if things go wrong, just please bear with me while we figure it out, but we'll be uh, staying as close as possible to our traditional worship style. So with that, I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. Our hope is in the God of our lives. God is a rock of refuge, a fortress against threat and shame. God has held us since our birth so we are never in the full grasp of the unjust and cruel. Even if we are brought to the edge of a cliff, God is with us and sustains us. In love, God saves and supports us. Trusting in God, we continually offer our praise. We know that whether we are joining digitally or in person, that we are not perfect beings. That is a reality of who we are as humans, no matter how much we are made in the image of God. So knowing that we are imperfect creatures, let us confess before all who are with us, all who join us across the internet, and all who join with us throughout space and time. God of life, we confess that we are too reluctant to speak and to live according to your truth. We grow comfortable with the way things are passively going throughout our world. We see ourselves as insiders, excluding those we consider outsiders. We find it easier to pluck up and pull down to destroy and overthrow rather than build up and plant the seeds of love around us. Forgive us for being timid disciples. Empty us of fear and shame and fill us with love that is humble and patient and kind. Lead us away from ourselves and towards service and care of others. We pray this in the name of the one who humbled himself, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, be assured that this day and every day, Christ came for you. Christ died for you. And by the power of God, our sins are forgiven today and every day. Amen. As we move towards the proclamation side of our bulletin, we have the life and work of the church, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we will not have Bible study today uh, with the church being closed. Um, don't forget that there, there is still the collection of canned soup. I believe Super Bowl Sunday is next Sunday. So that'll be the last day for collecting of soup. So please bring uh, all that you have for the uh, food closet that the Presbyterian women are supporting. And I believe that we are getting close to the final uh, day for uh, sausage reservations, if you would uh, like to reserve that from the men of the church. So please make sure that you fill those out. That form can be found digitally online um, on the Facebook page. So I encourage you to fill those out and get all of that in. With that, let us continue worshiping God. We'll now enter into a time of prayer and then move into the Lord's Prayer. Uh, there will be multiple pauses throughout this pastoral prayer. Uh, I encourage you to use that time of silence for things that are on your heart and mind. Let us pray. 
great creator and sustaining God, we come to you this day knowing that we come to you in a weird space and time, whether it's the weather, whether it's the virus that is still raging, whether it is some abnormal circumstance that is in our lives that only you know. And we come to you in this odd time in, in prayer so that we may turn our hearts and our minds to you, that you may hear and see all that is in our soul. We ask that you answer or leave the answers that do not need to be said to our prayers this day. We pray for those who especially are facing illness this day. We know more and more people in our lives that are affected, not just by the COVID-19 virus, but by various variants of that virus, as well as all that comes with just daily living from 24-hour bugs to battling with problematic diagnosis. Lord, comfort not only those who are sick, but also those who are being caregivers, those who support the sick, the doctors, the nurses, all of the staff, and all of the family, all the friends that are called in to help, and especially comfort those who are sick, who do receive those diagnoses, who it affects greatly. Oh God, we confessed that we at times become passive disciples, becoming comfortable in who we are. We pray that you will move us from still feet to having active hands so that when we pray for the hungry and the homeless, when we pray for those in need, we are a source of food, of shelter, and of caring. Oh God, each and every day that passes seems to bring new things into our lives that make our lives more and more difficult. We pray that when these things come into our lives, that it gives us time to pause, and focus on you and the little blessings that are in our lives. The smiles of our children or grandchildren or even great-grandchildren. the sun that shines upon our face, the snow that falls, the fires that crackle, all the things that make us smile in the midst of so much trial and tribulation in the world. Turn our hearts and minds to you this day and every day so that we Know that you walk beside us, that you carry us when we are in need. We can sit under your wings of comfort as you embrace us today, every day that we reach out to you. We reach out this day together, saying the prayer that is spanned across time and space that your son had taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We move into our scripture and I promise that since we are online, the sermon will not be nearly as long. I know it's difficult in this time to sit and look at a screen. So I invite you to pray right now for open hearts and open minds that the words that are spoken today, the scripture that is read, may speak to you as you sit maybe in your pajamas on the couch, sit around dinner tables, sit drinking your coffee, wherever you may be, that these words speak to you this day. Our scripture lesson comes from Luke 4. Uh, I'm extending the lectionary a little bit to include some of the background, but a lot of the background is that Jesus has just come from the wilderness in our gospel of Luke. He has come to his home in Nazareth and is teaching at the synagogue. So listen to our words today. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoner, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Is it this Joseph's son? They asked. Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly, I tell you, Christ continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard all that he had to say. They got up, drove him out of town, took him to the brow of the hill in which the town was built in order that they may throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Then he went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath, he taught the people. They were amazed at his teachings because his words had authority. The, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. This is a scripture verse that... Uh, I believe many pastors struggle with accepting a preach on if they are lectionary based preachers. It is not an easy text to decipher, to look at, or even to really talk about. Uh, it is a time in which we see Jesus blatantly rejected by people he likely put most of his trust in. Many of us grew up in a small town, and so we know how fast word can spread. It's definitely the same in Jesus' hometown. It wouldn't have been long until 
his mother or his father were saying, oh, my son was doing X, Y, and Z, is fulfilling the prophecy, was bragging on the things that their son was doing. And that spread through town like wildfire. We see in our scripture verse that the people really enjoyed what Jesus was saying, that his reading of the scripture was very profound. He was so good for a carpenter's son reading the scriptures of Isaiah. Yet, when he begins to interpret them and look more at more closely at the words, the people don't exactly like what they're hearing. The title of the sermon today is, I'd like my miracle now, please. And the reason I came up with this title is because I ended up finding this image. I'm going to try and share it with you all. This is a piece of art that is outside of the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art by Nathan Cooley. And as you can see, it is simply titled, There Will Be No Miracles Here. Cooley was inspired by the, this uh, story as it's portrayed in Mark. Uh, we see this story across the Gospels, but also the fact that in the mid, I believe, 16th century, there were waves of people going to towns in France where all of these miracles were being proclaimed, and they were going hoping for these miracles. The crowd here is likely thinking the same thing, that if Jesus really is the son of Joseph and that he is from around their hometown, then shouldn't, of course, he be giving more to his people, so to speak, that he should be giving more to his extended family, the people that he grew up with, he, they're all hoping to see the miracles that he performed in Capernaum, all hoping that they may be the recipients of something great. They're thinking, oh, well, I knew him when he was five and I helped him on his birthday, or I gave him his first carpenter job. These are all probably thoughts that they're thinking, yet Jesus once again flips the script upon what we think should happen. Jesus doesn't provide more and more for his, quote, people. No, he is showing that in Elijah's time, it wasn't folks that were bound by a geographic location or a religious affiliation. No, it was the folks that were outside the region in Elijah and Elisha's time that received the miracles. You don't just get the miracles for walking into church on Sunday morning or for being the one who knows the most Bible verses or simply for saying that you're a Christian. No, the, the scripture that is read in Isaiah reads that the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, to proclaim free, freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, set the oppressed free. These are categories that many of us don't meet. So why do we need an extra miracle well it's because that's who we feel that we are in a world in which we simply have to pull our phones up and order whatever we like to be here in two days time 
We want our miracles now. We want them to happen as soon as the prayers escape our lips. The reality is that the world usually doesn't work that way. It's usually other places, other people where these miracles happen, but they can happen to us. That's the beauty of the gospel is that when we do, for some reason, fall into these categories, there are the miracles there to pick us back up. There's our church family that helps whenever there is a call. Casseroles come in for those who are sick, people that come to help prepare everyone. It's this community where the miracles happen, led by Christ, sometimes done by Christ. This is the conundrum that we find ourselves in when we read this scripture, and it makes it hard for us to wrestle with. I confess that I fall into this give it to me now category from time to time. When I first moved into my house at Culpeper, instead of simply going down the street to buy some dishwasher fluid, I was already on Amazon and I thought, hey, why not just order it? And I did. Two days later, it arrived and I never had to get out of the house to go to the store. The problem, though, was, was that the next day before it all arrived, I had to go to the store anyway for something. It was that need to just get it then and there, to have it ordered, to know that it was coming. That was really what I needed. I didn't need it right then and now, just like the folks that were likely in the synagogue at that point didn't need a miracle right then and there. They simply just wanted to see the proof and the power of this boy who they had grown up next to. They just wanted to know that it would be there if they needed it. But that's not the way that the faith usually works. We struggle with this, that our faith is something that is likely never going to be proven without a doubt. There's always going to be someone with a counter argument to our faith. But we find joy and love and caring in the God that we put faith in. We find caring and love and embracing hugs in this community of faith. These are all things that we find. We don't need a miracle right now. We don't have to demand that a miracle happens. Rather, we have the ability to make miracles happen in the times of need. This is one of the mysteries of faith, but we don't walk alone. We walk with Christ and God and filled with the Holy Spirit. We walk with each other. We can be amazed at the teachings, and these words do have authority. So let's not run them out of town when our prayers are not immediately answered in an Amazon-style, two-day, prime-fulfilled fashion. Rather, let us talk together, sit together, have faith together, and care and love each other together this day and every day. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me this morning as we have our worship service online and across the various uh, facets of the interweb. Uh, I'm not sure what all this is going to be posted on. I'll assume Facebook and YouTube for right now. And I hope that each and every one of you are 
staying warm, staying safe. I pray for health, and for goodness. Know that there's no quick answers, no fast miracles, but that we are a part of a faith that loves and cares each other, cares for each other, and that we can be a part of each other's lives today and every day. So go out knowing that the mountains and the hills burst before you in the song, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. So go in peace.